Hey guys, we just got back from fishing out of Key West with our friend Cody who is a charter captain down there and he put us on some giant fish in some rough conditions. So I hope you guys enjoy the fishing part of this video Then I'll meet you back here to fillet up the fish and then in the kitchen to cook them up. So see you then. Starting out our morning, throwing some chum to chum up the pilchards, and then Cody's tossing in this tight little slip, and he's throwing it like perfect right between the pilings. And we are loading up on some pilchards so we can head offshore. Pancakes for breakfast. It's crazy that when you throw the net, the pilchards run down for two seconds, they come right back up and keep eating chum. Really? Like the net's not even there. Alright guys, first bait going down. We are in 200 feet of water. And this wind is not that up, huh? Well, I was letting my bait down and I got eaten before I hit bottom. A bonita! So we got a nice razor belly here. These muttons like the bigger ones especially. You're just gonna go in right to the bottom jaw. And you wanna take your time hooking this bait so you don't make a big hole in his nose so it doesn't wiggle off the hook on his way down. And then we're just gonna take him, pitch him out away from the boat. And then we're gonna take this. You wanna give it a good swing too so it doesn't get tangled to get it way out there. You prefer to leave your clicker on or off? Clicker on and you know, keep a little bit of tension on the way down so that the lead doesn't swing too fast and make the bait spiral up. And we fish one in the front, one in the back. Well, I'm going down again with my next bait and it's definitely pretty rough out here. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be this windy today, so I'm just waiting to hit bottom. And once I hit bottom, I'm gonna put it in the rod holder and hook it in the rod holder and then pick it up after that. Good, distract the shark, catch the mutton. That's what we like to see. I put my fish Don't on pause, bro. Don't be scared to horse that thing. Well, Victor hooked what he thinks is a shark on the vertical jig. And the back rod just went off with pilchard on bottom. Cody thinks it's the right species, AKA a nice mutton. This is how we do it. You gotta distract the shark. You gotta pick your battles. So we can catch the trophy fish with the other rod. Just gotta improvise. Keep going with that thing. hard to tell how rough it is on camera but it is pretty rough out here and we got some big swells going on I wish you could tell through the camera it's pretty crazy so Brookie as she was dropping down pretty sure she got hit by Bonita so if it's not a shark 
or getting eaten on the way down or a shark eating our bait. It's tough. On the way down, got eaten by a bonita. You can tell by their crazy little tail kicks on the end of your rod. You can just see it bouncing around. Start reeling, Stanley. You're, you're getting like slacked off. Keep but going, there is going, a ton going. of bonitas all the way up around the boat. Cody keeps just throwing out handfuls of pilchards. It'd be nice if they were tunas, going on there. I don't know what to do. but they're bonita. Anyone to catch him in the mouth. Didn't even hook him. Wow, that him. is skill. <laughs> that is skill, bro. Do you see that? I didn't even hook it. I lassoed his tail. That's why it was fighting weird. Can you see that? So the hook wrapped around the leader and then just made a knot and she hooked him in the tail. Look, not even hooked. Oops. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Almost heavy. <laughs> Disney knows you know he's hooked. He doesn't know he's hooked yet. You only got 354 more feet. Well, we have switched it up. At least what I'm doing. <laughs> And I'm doing some vertical jigging in 360 feet and that's a pretty far distance. This fish has not woke up yet. But there he goes. Now he knows he's up. But we got a little rain shower on us. There's a water spout. There Where'd was a go? water spout. I was just looking at the gun. Raindrops falling on the lens. Look at that well, elephant eating peanuts, don't they? Look at that jig. It's like I'm not even ready to pick it up yet. Are you gonna be able to pick it up? We're about to find out. Oh boy. There we go. AJ's almost as big as me. That's what you get when you come fish with Captain Cody. AJ's all year long. There we go. All right guys, so I'm not gonna do an AJ catch and cook, but Victor's gonna do an AJ catch and cook in his video. I'm probably gonna cook up that mutton snapper, but there's my biggest amberjack I've ever caught. Pretty Ready? stoked. And we're gonna weigh it when we get back to the dock so you guys will know exactly how big it is. In there? He's on the trash can. I don't want you to see that. Oh, I see. 
That's what I'm saying. I don't really trust these skills because they always act up. Okay, we'll call 55 it 55 pounds. 55? Uh -huh. 55? 55. There you go, bro. 55. I said as long as it, it was over 40, I would be happy. And I mean, you guys can see the scale yourself, but it's looking like 55 pounds. So, still pretty stoked. That's a, that's a big amberjack so I'm excited and again I'm not gonna eat the amberjack in my video we're gonna eat the amberjack in Victor's video so make sure you guys check that out but we're gonna eat the mutton so I will meet you guys back at the dock back in Pompano Beach so Florida. see you then all right guys so we are back home at the fillet table and it is time to fillet up our fish and we only caught one mutton on this trip but we did catch a bunch of AJ's as well as Bonita's so we had a great time with some tough conditions but we made it work. And like I had said, Cody is a charter captain in Key West. So if you guys are looking for a charter down in the Keys, he is great. We've done a bunch of videos fishing with him before. We've caught tuna, um, lots of amberjacks, lots of muttons, red snapper, a bunch of different things. So make sure you guys check him out if you are interested in a charter. So the knife I am using is a six inch curved boning knife by Dexter Outdoors. You guys can save 20% on any Dexter Outdoors knives with my code BROOK20. We got a live studio audience here. Say yep. hello. Hi. What's going on, guys? We got Stanley, who's home from the Navy for a couple weeks. And this girl from Michaela, who they f we fished with. So muttons have a decent rib cage, so make sure you take your time getting over those bones. Break through the pin bones. This is like one of my favorite knives by Dexter. It's good for a lot of different things, even though this is a big fish, I still like this six inch knife. Get around the backbone. There we go. Hold on, I gotta stop you. Stanley earlier said, I can flay like a mother trucker. Look at this. How many girls, let alone guys, do you know that can do that good of a job? Look at this. Thanks, man. There's nothing left on that thing. You killed it, babe. You are very good at <laughs> flaying fish. Stanley asked me when was the last time I filleted a mutton. I was like, I don't know, a few months, but. It's like riding a bike, you never forget. Yep, still got it. Oh my gosh, look, Petey. <gasps> this Petey! Is, this, is, this is our bird friend that comes to eat. He's gonna fly down onto the plane. Yeah. Look at him. Here you go. He'll sit here for hours and just eat. That's Petey. How'd she do, Stanley? She did great. That's an awesome play job. I mean, it's been probably eight years for me since I played a mutton, so I'm not even gonna attempt that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now to skin, I'm switching over to a nine inch flexible fillet knife. They come with these awesome sheaths so you can just throw it in your tackle box or where, wherever and you don't have to worry about a nice sharp knife being exposed. So I like the long in nine inch because if you see, it'll basically, it just makes it with this big mutton. So I can just glide across, put it at the edge of the fillet table, start from the tail Hold on with your left hand, at least that's what I do, because I'm right-handed. And we're gonna just glide down. And there you go. And now you just gotta get out your pin bones and make sure you didn't get any rib cage bones in there in case you did, just cut those out. Feed them to your pet bird friend. And then take your hand to try to figure out how far up the pin bones go, which they don't go that far in a mutton. 
and this is also the pin bones run down the length of the bloodline. So you get out the worst part of the bloodline at the same time as your pin bones. And there we go. A nice, beautiful chunk of mutton filet. So I will see you guys in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we are pan searing our mutton snapper. We're going to do some oven baked asparagus and then we're also going to do some orzo pasta. So the first thing we're going to do is season our mutton snapper. And we're gonna go really basic with just some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And now some fresh cracked pepper, tri-colored pepper. Mutton snapper is an amazing fish cooked so many different ways. I've never had mutton snapper that I didn't enjoy thoroughly. It is a really, really delicious fish. So cook it however you want. And this is the entire fish, by the way, broken down into a bunch of pieces, as you can tell. And then lastly, just our garlic powder. So three simple ingredients to just take your mutton snapper from a one to a 10. <laughs> so we are seasoning pretty well, pretty heavy. I'm only seasoning this one side because I'm gonna sear it really good and get a nice crust on one side and then flip it over and cook the rest of the way on the other side. So I'm only seasoning one side, that's why we went really heavy on the seasonings on this side. Now, for the asparagus, we're gonna also go pretty simple with that, but we're gonna do some garlic infused olive oil by Branch and Vine. This stuff is absolutely amazing. They have so many different um, gourmet olive oils and vinegars that are all just to die for, literally. We've been using them a bunch in our cooking. So good. So just roll these babies around so that everyone gets some of that delicious olive oil on there. And lastly, seasoning the asparagus with just salt and pepper. I think this is the first video in our kitchen using our new um, microphones that we got, which are just like little clip-on lav mics. And some of you guys had said that the echoing was really bad in here, so we got, we upgraded our stuff a little bit. Let me know what you guys think, if it sounds better in here with the new mic system, so comment down below. Okay, asparagus going in the oven at 400 degrees. All right, so here is the orzo pasta, which after I cooked it, I added more of the garlic olive oil to the orzo pasta and then put it in the fridge because I'm not serving this hot. So here is our orzo pasta after it's been sitting in the fridge with the garlic olive oil. And now we are adding in some cherry tomatoes that are quartered. I'm gonna just put them all in there. These are mozzarella pearls. They're basically just little cute mozzarella balls. And then lastly, some basil. This is just some nice chopped basil that was so kindly, very nicely chopped by our sous chef, AKA the cameraman, AKA Victor. <laughs> Stir this around. So there's that. Now we're gonna do some salt, as well as some pepper, and as well as some fresh lemon juice. Make sure there's no seeds in there. You don't wanna get any seeds in. That was a good lemon, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have two skillets because we're cooking a bunch of fish and I want it to all be done at one time. We have some avocado oil in the pan and now we're going down with our fish. Remember, we only season the one side. Wow, 
that color, huh? Ooh. down with a little lemon infused olive oil and then some balsamic vinegar by Branch and Vine. Both of these are again. Some of our orzo pasta. Lastly, our mutton snapper. Oh, how did that get there? Look at that, that's a million dollar plate, huh? Thank you, look at that. Holy smokes, is that fancy looking. Jeez. Deb got the prettier one. Look at this one. Prettier than this? Well, she's prettier than you, so she gets the prettier plate, huh? Oh, God. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Eating mutton snapper makes me want to go fish for them. Every time. I don't think there's a better fish. I, I really don't. This is mutton snapper, I always say, is my favorite mm, fish. Very good. I love Delicious. it. Delicious. I can tell you really did not like the brine, judging by your plate. I'm telling you, that that plate ate like a high dollar plate. Like you were you were in an expensive restaurant with a very trained chef. And the best part is it didn't cost me a dime. <laughs> it's easy to say there's nothing to be left to be desired from these plates and uh it's the theme in this household where it just Every time we come, it seems like the bar just keeps getting higher and higher. And you think you've had the best fish you've ever had, and then you come back and you're like, oh, wait, we have mine tonight with this orzo and everything, and it's, it's phenomenal. Really good. Comment below for your girl, Brooke, right now. You killed it. Thank you. I think it's your best looking one yet, Brooke. Like and subscribe. That's you know right. What? It tastes better than it looks, <laughs> if you can imagine that. Yep. It looks really pretty, but it tastes even better. That's, the, that's, the olive oil and balsamic on the plate was a beautiful touch, and it adds a little more flavor to it. It's just so good. That's absolutely true. It tastes better than it looks, and it looked damn good. <laughs> awesome. That is probably the most simple fish recipe you could ever do. You got three ingredients, you put it in a pan, you sear it really good on one side, flip it over and cook it just a little bit on the other side. Then as for everything else, you know, the orzo pasta, pretty simple, really delicious. And I just think it's delicious, so I'm very happy with it. I mean, we got empty plates all around. I think Brooke dropped the mic on this one. I mean, presentation was a 10 out of 10. The fish was a 10 out of 10. Everything came together. And then, like the, the flavors, you got the little bit of balsamic and you have that branch and vine uplands, the lemon olive oil, the garlic olive oil, and it was relatively healthy too. Um, you just killed it, babe. Real good job. Thank you. It's so good. What you got going on over there? Thirds, I think, at least. Thirds. You like that stuff, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, I would say this is definitely a success, so I recommend giving everything that I did tonight a try 
And if you guys are headed to the Keys or you're interested in fishing in Key West, make sure you check out Captain Cody. He's an amazing charter captain. I will have all his information linked down in the description, as well as the past videos when we fished with him. Like I said, we've caught a lot of different species with him, more than we even caught on this trip. So check that out. Again, linked in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.